Did you hear the news? They made it through the selections for Masterful Chefs! Really? Woohoo! That's great! <laughs> it was a total breeze. I wasn't even trying. Oh, but a true champion never rests on their laurels. I'm still gonna need your help to prepare for the competition. I made a few new test dishes and I was hoping everyone could try them and give some feedback. A traveler, you wanna be the first? Oh, uh, oh. Yeah, we did. And anyway, we get to eat your food all the time, so we're biased. You should find some other people this time, just to play it safe. Good idea! Okay, let me think. Hmm. Ah, let's get Beto to try it first. Beto! Yep, you can definitely trust her opinion. Let's go find her. Right now, she should be down at the docks. Let me box up this food real quick, then we can head on down. Beto, ahoy! Hey, look, who is she with? Hi, Beto. Hi, Xinyan. Are we interrupting anything? Chong Ling, <laughs> woman of the hour. We were just talking about you. Oh, well, Beta was saying you and I should get ourselves on board sometime. Says the whole crew's been asking for us. <laughs> Seems like you three go way back. Oh, we really do. Beto and Xinyan are two of my oldest customers, and I've helped out in the kitchen on board Beto's ship in the past. Recently, Xinyan's been planning to do a show on board, too. That's the plan. Good music's meant for Sharon. You guys should check it out sometime. Will do. But I came here today because I made it into the Masterful Chef's Finals. And I was just trying out some new dishes to bring to the competition. Can you have a little taste and give me some feedback? Sure. Beats drinking on an empty stomach. Oh, about time. I'm starving over here. Let's see what you got. Oh, man! This chicken foo young's tasting awesome! Oh, this food is too good for me to be soaking up the alcohol with. <laughs> These three seem to have a great time with each other. The only thing is you've got three dishes here. Chicken foo young, come and get it, and crystal shrimp, and they all taste kind of refreshing. Uh, is refreshing really a flavor? When you spend all your time at sea, you don't have a lot of choice when it comes to food. Especially on the longer voyages, where you've got to stretch out your rations as far as you can. The first thing you want to do when you get back on dry land is dig into a nice hot meal that's swimming in oil and has a ton of flavor. That's the exact opposite of Ning Wong's tastes! Oh, sure is. Beto's tastes are pretty similar to mine and Xiang Ling's. Ugh, Ningguang. I am sick of hearing that name. Our tastes couldn't be more different. You'll never find us eating the same bowl of food. But last time when you were chatting with her, Paimon thought you two seemed to get along just fine. We're evenly matched. Guess that makes us equals. But I'm sorry, limp cabbage leaves are never gonna do it for me. I hear ya, I hear ya. Steamed cabbage and broth might be upper class and look fancy and all, but man, is it boring! It's never gonna give you that flavor explosion you get with some of the other dishes out there. So, Xinyan, are these dishes too mild for you too? Well, not so much mild. I just think you maybe missed a beat somewhere. Exactly. This is some fine cooking, no question about that. But if this is for a competition, it needs more... oomph. Beat? Oomph? Mm, are we sure these terms apply to cooking? Beat and oomph. Hmm... Beat, yeah! You know what a beat is? Well, I only know music, though. I'm nowhere near your level when it comes to cooking, so don't mind me if it doesn't make much sense. No, no! You're both completely right! Beat and oomph. That's what I need. I actually thought as much while I was cooking them. Even though this was a brand new combination, it still felt like I was missing that one thing that'll seal the deal. You know, really push it over the finish line. Seems like she's found her muse. Um, does that mean music theory is compatible with cooking? 
Hey! Paimon didn't quite get the implication, but Paimon can tell when you're being a meanie. Okay, I think I know what I need to do. Great! So this went really well. Don't hold back. Just get out there and do your thing. You're a pro, Xiangling, and you've totally got this. Hands down, best chef in Liyue Harbor. Ain't that right, Beidou? Well, I think so anyway. More than any other chef. And there ain't a whole lot of people I'd be willing to say that about. <laughs> I'll do my best. Thanks, everyone. All right, we'll leave you to it. I'm gonna take Xinyan on board for a while. Xiangling, they both had pretty strong tastes. You sure that won't be a problem? Shouldn't we get a second opinion from someone with milder tastes? That's a good point. Beto likes her greasy stir fries, and Xinyan can really handle her spice. Yeah, we should get another opinion. Now, who do we know whose tastes are on the mild side? Um, who, who, who? Oh, right! Makes sense! So, back to Wang Xiu In? Who? Who is it? Someone you just missed last time we were there. Huh? Oh! Paimon remembers! He said that we just need to speak his name and poof! He'll show up! Um... Will he definitely hear us saying his name though? Maybe we should find somewhere quieter. Okay! Let's take turns shouting his name! Uh-huh... Do I need to do this too? Hyman's going first! Ahem. Yeah! Um, nothing's happening. Hmm, let me try again. Yeah! Uh, that's weird. Does he not want to hang out with us? Oh, wait, so let me get this straight. Some guy with special powers promised you both that you just need to shout his name and he'll show up? Um, well, not both, actually. Just one of us. Oh, right. Well, you should be the one to try it then. Paimon clearly just doesn't want to feel left out. Oh, okay then. You called? Whoa! Oh, he actually came! You spoke my name, did you not? When I make you a promise, I will honor it. Blink of an eye and poof! He's there! That's how you know he's an adeptus. An adeptus? Oh, uh, Xiao, was it? Hi there! It was me who asked the traveler to call you here. My name's Youngling. I'm a chef. I've made it into the finals of this year's Masterful Chefs, and I'm testing some dishes out in preparation. I'm trying to get feedback from customers with all different tastes. Customers. And that includes me? Uh-huh. The traveler says you prefer mild food. Just the kind of person I'm looking for. I if you don't mind, I'd like you to try the dishes I've made and tell me your thoughts. <sighs> Since it's you, I will do it. Yay! Hmm. Um, how is it? Are you sure you can eat it? Don't force yourself. Tastes pretty good. Huh? Really? I can't believe it. An Adeptus says he likes my cooking. If my dad was here, he'd be crying tears of joy. You excel in the culinary arts. I'm reminded of another chef I know. That chef cooks dishes with soul, as do you. Both of you are masters of your craft. Who do you think he means? Smiley Yencho? If I had to find fault with something, the two sides are a little strong for my taste. Some minor adjustments would take this dish from excellence to perfection. Just my own opinion. Do not fixate on it. Take it or leave it as you see fit. Alright, go easy on the sides. 
Okay, I got it. Thank you, Adeptus friend. It was really great to meet you. I'll be leaving now. See you next time. I still can't believe he actually came! So, what would happen if we called his name again now? Do you think he'd come back right away? Only kinda maybe not really joking! Jeez! Good news! After two rounds of taste testing, I've had an idea on what to do next! Great! Lucky we picked the right people to talk to! I'd better head back and try this out a few times while it's fresh in my mind. Thanks for your help. Oh, and the final is in Yujing Terrace. You better come and watch. Will do. Good luck. <laughs> you bet. Welcome, everyone, to the Masterful Chef's Final. At the appointment of this organizing committee, I am your host and officiator, Yenfei. Hey, Yenfei's here too! This event is brought to you by the Liyue Qixing in collaboration with a number of participating enterprises. The competition is divided into the selections phase and the finals. We saw many contestants from all over Liyue in the selections process, and all of them were outstanding chefs in their own right. Of those, the two strongest participants were put through to today's finals. In just a few short moments, the finals will take place right here before your very eyes. As the officiator, it is my honor and privilege to represent the organizing committee and indeed the people of Liyue and overseeing today's proceedings. Next, please allow me to introduce the judges. There will be a select panel and an audience panel. The three members of the select panel are... The Tianchuan, Lady Ningguang. The Yuheng, Lady Keqing. And last but not least, gourmet connoisseur, Uncle Tian. In addition to these three, ten judges will be chosen from among the audience to sample our contestants' dishes and cast their vote. That makes a total of 13 judges, with 13 votes between them. Each judge will vote for their preferred finalist, and the one who receives the most votes will be today's winner. <laughs> it's all so exciting! And now, please join me in welcoming our two contestants into the arena. Come on out! To my left, a competition favorite down from Dihua. Life's harsh when you live on a marsh, but this kitchen ace will put a smile on your face. Please welcome Smiley Yan Xiao. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Whoa, Yan Xiao made it into the finals too. But what's up with him? He seems really nervous. Yan Xiao! Chin up, shoulders back. Everyone from the inn is super proud of you. Huh? Oh. Oh. <laughs> and to my right, a stalwart of Liyue Harbor culinary scene, a little feisty with a whole lot of spicy, give it up for Xiangling! Uh, and her m mysterious assistant, who knows who? Time on nose, it's Guova! Hey, everybody! I'll do my best! Contestants, please repeat after me. As a finalist in Masterful Chefs, I solemnly swear to commit myself fully, compete fairly, and abide by all competition procedures. As a finalist and masterful chefs, I solemnly swear to commit myself fully, compete fairly, and abide by all competition procedures. Uh, as a finalist and masterful chefs, I um, solemnly swear to commit myself fully, compete fairly, and abide by all competition procedures. And I, for my part, promise to uphold the principles of fairness, impartiality, and transparency in my officiation of the proceedings. Now, I will hand things over to the select panel judge, Ningguang, for the announcement of today's theme. Thank you all for being here today at the Masterful Chef's Finals. I am the Tianchuan, Ningguang. The organizers have chosen the theme for today's event, and that theme is... Of Earth and Waterborn. Of Earth and Waterborn. Hmm. Just like the Feast of Bounteous Land. It really captures the spirit of this year's Moonchase Festival. 
It's like surfing turf, but the deep and meaningful version. The rules are simple. The one who receives the most votes wins. Tailor your dishes to the judge's preferences, or win over the audience with your originality. The choice is yours. Well then, I look forward to both of your contributions. Contestants will have one hour of cooking time available and may only use ingredients provided by the organizers in their dishes. I trust this is no problem. Okay, without further ado, let the cooking commence. Begin. Time to pull out all the stops. Show everyone why you're the best. Traveler, Paimon. <laughs> Thanks for coming to support me. Don't you worry. I'm going to make this the best tasting dish I've ever cooked. Whoa, whoa, what's this? Hold up. Things are taking an unexpected turn on the Masterful Chef's stage. Sheng Ling's mysterious assistant appears to be aiding her opponent. Judges, are we going to allow this? We knew in advance that Sheng Ling would be accompanied by a mysterious assistant, and the judges agreed that the two could be classed as one individual for the purposes of the competition. But what do we say to this? I take no issue with it. In any case, the assistant hasn't done much in the way of assisting. <laughs> no competition would be complete without a little drama. Ah, the part of being young. I won't be the old fogey that ruins it for them. <clears throat> Please allow me to explain to our host. Prior to the competition, the judges reviewed both contestants, and we can comfortably confirm that neither side is participating in a way that contravenes the competition rules. Xiangling is a highly accomplished chef, and her assistant is more like family to her. Xiangling prepares all of her own dishes herself. All that her assistant will do is occasionally provide a fire source. Given Xiangling's level of culinary skill, the difference between her using firewood or her assistant is a trivial one. I appreciate everyone's concerns. The presence of a mysterious assistant performing strange dance moves to cheerlead for Xiangling is a little unexpected. But the mysterious assistant has now started cheerleading for Smiley Yenxiao too, demonstrating total impartiality. By encouraging both Xiangling and her opponent, they have proven to be a fair supporter. That's right! Boba's not really outside help. Boba just likes to watch people cook! And I'm sure the only reason they went over there is to try to help Yen Xiao feel less nervous. I give you all my word, Boba will not interfere with the competition. And I would also say that it's a loss to the competition if Yen Xiao isn't at the top of his form. I say that as someone who's eaten Yen Xiao's cooking at Wang Shu Wen before. He is an excellent chef, and I want this to be a competition between the best we both have to bring. I see. Hmm, most amusing. Uncle Tian, what's your opinion? I have no objections. It's an honor and a privilege to see two contestants so dedicated to having a fair and square contest. Hmm. The judges and the officiator accept this explanation. Let the competition continue. Yan Xiao, are you alright? I don't know what's wrong with me. I've never been so nervous in my life. Uh, look, my hands won't stop shaking. Take it easy. I've been there before. I can help. Try saying a tongue twister to yourself in your head. Or think of some happy memories about your dad. Why my dad? That's a bit specific. Because that's what I do. Uh, uh, I guess I'll think of my mom then. Uh, anyway, you should carry on. I'll be fine. Don't hold up your own dishes on my account. Nothing's being held up. I'm finished already. Huh? Oh, right. Uh, then I need to focus up and win this thing. There you go. That's the attitude we want. You're a very capable chef, Yen Xiao. So come on, show everyone what you're made of. Just like you showed us last time at Wang Xu In. Yes. You're right. I can do this. I can do this. 
Thank you, Shengling. And thanks to your... Um, well, thanks. Time for me to get cooking. Bah. Time's up! Both contestants have now finished cooking. I would like to invite them to present their dishes to the judges for evaluation. We will proceed in the order that the contestants finished. Xiangling, please describe your dish. My dish is... Jiyun chili chicken with sides of triple-layered consomme and crystal shrimp. The theme is of earth and waterborne, which includes land and sea. In other words, land animals, fowl, and seafood are all potential ingredients. My main dish, Jiyun chili chicken, is a combination of fowl and chilies. Jiyun chilies capture the essence of the mountains where they grow, and fowl is a gift from the heavens. Triple-layered consomme also uses fowl, and its other ingredients are ham and bamboo shoots. These are also flavors from the mountains, but they complement and contrast with the chicken dish. Fresh instead of spicy, cold instead of hot. The crystal shrimp is made from a combination of rice, shrimp meat, and carrot. A thin, translucent skin wraps diced carrot and a whole shrimp. Fresh, crispy, and tender. Shrimps are a gift from the ocean. Tightly wrapping them in a skin made from rice makes this dish a blend of land and sea. Fresh with a hint of sweetness. It's the perfect note to end this course on. Ooh, a strong delivery there from Xiangling. Let's see what our next contestant, Yan Xiao, has to say. My dish is... Adeptus Temptation with a Mint Salad and Golden Shrimp Balls. As Xiangling says, earth and water means land and sea. So birds, land animals, and seafood were also the ingredients I incorporated. Adeptus Temptation is a much-loved dish in Liyue, and as chef of Wang Shuin, I've always been proud to offer this as the signature specialty dish of our menu. It's a complex dish with very particular ingredients. Smoked ham, crab, fresh shrimp meat, and matsutake. I chose this as my main dish as a sign of respect toward my profession and to this competition. The mint salad is my first side. Cool and tender, with a subtle sweetness, it's a perfect answer to the rich and strong flavors of the Adeptus Temptation. Golden Shrimp Balls is a time-honored classic loved by everyone. A hearty and wholesome broth, followed up with a shrimp ball. <laughs> oh, pure bliss. Mm, Paimon can smell it from all the way over here. It's driving Paimon crazy. Judges. Please sample the dishes. Mmm, very impressive. Both contestants' dishes are well considered, expertly made, and truly delicious. I'm gonna have another golden shrimp. Uh, um, I mean, <clears throat> I shall have to sample both contestants' dishes once more before I can reach a verdict. Now, Shang Ling has taken an interesting approach here. She's chosen a cold dish as her main. I have to say, that's a bold move. It's also a unique take on Zhuiyun chili chicken. Although the dish as a whole is served cold, the chili peppers have been stir-fried, so they're still just a little warm on the inside. You get a nice crunch as you bite in. Then, you get the spiciness and warmth all coming in together. And then, just a hint of that wonderful pepperiness to top it all off. It's quite simply extraordinary. <clears throat> this Adeptus Temptation is quite exceptional. The triple layer consomme is also a very superlative contribution. Excellent flavor, well balanced between sweet and savory. Yes, the standard is very high. Judges of the select panel, I will now ask you to consider your votes carefully before writing them down and handing them to me. Also, the organizing committee has selected today's audience judges, and they are now evaluating the dishes. Everyone who's been lucky enough to sample today's dishes, please consider and cast your vote independently. Uh, how are we not involved in this? Why didn't they pick us to be judges? Paimon has buckets of passion and oodles of expertise when it comes to food. Uh, for all the chefs there are in the world and for all the amazing dishes that you can cook, the fact remains that you're the one who treats Paimon the best. 
Thank you all for waiting. All votes have been received and counted, and the results have been returned to Ningguang. I now invite Ningguang to take the floor and announce the results of the Masterful Chef's Finals. It is my pleasure to announce that the winner of the Masterful Chef's Finals is... <laughs> By a mere one vote margin, Xiangling! Wow! <laughs> what? How is it so close? Well, there it is. <sighs> I knew it. It was a close contest, but we have a winner! Liu Harbor's Xiangling has beaten Dihua Marsh's Yan Xiao by just one vote! There can only be one winner, but the fact that this was so close shows just how much both of these outstanding chefs managed to impress our judges. Thank you both for your stellar contributions here today. A big thank you to all the audience for being here today, especially those who have come from far and wide. As officiator, I declare the result of this competition to be fair and valid, thus bringing the Masterful Chefs finals to a close. Thank you all for coming. Until next time. Please exit the venue in an orderly fashion and remember to take all of your personal belongings with you. Come on, let's go over and take a look. Looks like I won this time, Yan Xiao. But I'd still like to try your dishes, if that's okay. Sure. I'll have a try of yours, too. Oh, truly exquisite. <laughs> no doubt in my mind why you're the winner here. Mm, this Adeptus temptation is really good. It's so fresh, I'm almost moved to tears. <laughs> well... Just goes to show that you have a taste for the finer things in life. No, no, you've got me all wrong. We're just a small neighborhood restaurant too, so I totally understand. Food is life, and customers are at the heart of all food culture. So humble food cooking is not to be looked down upon. <sighs> is that right? Huh. I'd heard you'd gotten famous for your experimental approach to cooking and were all about fancy and exclusive foods. Never realized you'd done your time in a small kitchen, too. <laughs> well, there you have it. All the greats come from the smaller places. The same goes for you. You can't work in an in-kitchen unless you know how to consistently please customers. It's no wonder your food is so top-notch. You're the kind of competition I'm glad to have. Let's stay in touch. Maybe we can find some time in the future to... <laughs> uh, trade tips. You got it. And next time we meet as competitors, let's both be even better than we are now. All right. Deal. Traveler, Paimon! Thanks for coming. Did you get to try the food? Don't even go there. Paimon's still peeved. <laughs> I can't believe it. You didn't get picked? Well, never mind. Don't get mad. I'll make some more for you when we get back. You will? Woohoo! Great! Oh, uh, the organizer said that Yen Xiao and I need to go register our delivery addresses. Apparently, they're gonna deliver an exclusive ingredients package and the prize money at a later date. So I need to get moving. I'll come find you guys after. Ah, uh, Xiao Ling seems really happy. Good for her! Looks like Kuching and Ningguang left already. As the organizers, they must have gone to wrap up some last-minute things. Let's go ask them for an update about the statue. Kuching, there you are! Oh... You found me. Huh? Is everything okay? <laughs> Traveler, I have found myself in something of a predicament. In the competition, I voted for Smiley Yenxiao. So you're frustrated because you can't go back and vote for Xiangling instead? 
No, that's not it. As a judge, I had a duty to remain objective. I made my decision after thinking about it very carefully, and my conscience is clear. Xiangling is my friend, so by rights, I should be honest with her about this. But, as you know, I voted based purely on my personal opinion. As a contestant, Xiangling may not be able to appreciate this, and I do not know how to deal with people of her temperament. <sighs> I just don't know how to break it to her. Ah, uh, it's no big deal. Just say it however comes naturally. Xiangling of all people isn't bothered about that kind of stuff. And anyway, she still won in the end. Oh, hey, here you are. I've been looking for you for ages. Xiangling, there's something I need to tell you. Hmm? Wh what is it? My grandfather always said to me, in contests of food, always follow your heart. Which is to say that in gastronomical disputes, or indeed competitions, one must cast their vote for the party that they agree with. This decision must be based on one's honest thoughts, not influenced by any external factors. Of course, that was just my grandfather's opinion. But I have to say, I am inclined to think he had a point. So... Despite the fact that I am your friend, I cast my vote for Smiley Yen Xiao's Adeptus Temptation. <laughs> well, maybe it was. I like golden shrimp balls. Is that a problem? You were acting so serious that I honestly thought something was up. It's fine. Doesn't bother me one bit. Huh? You voted for who you wanted to. And that's totally okay. In fact, that's exactly how it should be. Otherwise, how could it be a fair competition? So, you made a point of telling me. Is that because you were worried that it made you a bad friend? <clears throat> I... don't be absurd. <sighs> Didn't I say already? I love this about you. You're just so conscientious about everything. Half-baked feedback just isn't meaningful to me at this stage. Seeking reassurance is what novices do, and it's been a long time since I was a novice. The way forward from today will only get more challenging, as will the dishes I'll need to cook. Honestly, I'll need friends like you along the way. You have a strong sense of responsibility, Kuching. But you know, not everything is always about responsibility. Yes, you're a Qixing, but you're also you, Kuching. When you're with friends, you don't need to think about everything so thoroughly. You know that's what Ningguang's like, right? Beidou's always telling me about how well she gets along with Ningguang. They even play chess aboard her ship sometimes. So you see, Ningguang's kind of bold in that she doesn't let her identity and reputation get in the way of her ability to have a good time. You could take a leaf out of her book. Outside of work, it's time to let go and relax. Traveler... Xiongling, I... Uh, anyway, what are we standing around here for? Let's go and check on the status of the Stove God statue. Oh, yeah! Paimon had nearly forgotten about that! Let's go see! How strange! It hasn't changed one bit! This doesn't make any sense. We cooked our hearts out. Does this mean... The competition wasn't enough to awaken the statue? <laughs> oh well. I suppose it was simply not meant to be. Yeah! We've waited this long already! There's no harm in waiting a little longer! Right, Xiangling? Yup, there's still time! Let's be patient! We'll all see this through together! On another note, I have some good news for you, Kuching! Things are looking optimistic for that recipe you gave me. Master came by before the competition and filled in the parts that were missing. So now I'll be able to cook it. In fact, I'll go find somewhere to make it right now. Wait here. Xiangling. Oh, uh, and Traveler, could you come with me? Huh? You only just beat Smiley and Chow. You think you're up for challenging us already? Obviously not what I meant. You collect recipes, don't you? 
I thought you'd probably be needing this dish during your travels, so I figured I'd share it with you. Oh! <laughs> right! Paimon knew that! <laughs> Sheesh, we totally misread that situation. Uh huh? Jeez! Careful eating your words so fast, you'll give yourself heartburn. <clears throat> what are you staring at me for? Go on, go get on with your cooking. We're back! The Traveler and I made one each. Here, have a taste while it's still warm. Thank you. Don't mind if I do. <clears throat> hmm? uh, what is it? What does that face mean? I... This flavor... I've tasted it before. Uh, apologies. Xiongling, Traveler, thank you both. This is everything I had hoped it would be. It tastes wonderful, and quite amazingly, somehow it took me right back to my childhood, when my grandfather was still around. Really? That's awesome! I didn't have a chance to fully explain before. In fact, when Master had filled in the missing parts of the recipe for me, I realized that I already knew how to make this dish. You already knew? You mean, you were able to make this without ever seeing the recipe? Uh-huh. My dad taught me how to make it. Wait, but isn't this dish from Kuching's grandpa's notes, though? About that. I do not believe that this recipe was my grandfather's creation. My grandfather was a well-known real estate tycoon in Liyue, and also a scholar. He was an avid collector of old books and was quite knowledgeable on many of Liyue's customs and traditions that are no longer practiced. As a child, I used to spend a lot of time with him in his study. We'd read the classics together, then debate how much of it was actually genuine, and whether Rex Lapis was real or not. He used to say, books are just a bridge that bring us a little closer to history. It's up to those of us in later generations to ask these questions, search for the answers, and decide what they mean. Since then, my grandfather has passed on, and I've grown up to become a Chi-Sing. My views on Rex Lapis have changed in this time too, from myth to reality. For me, the name Rex Lapis is inextricably wound up with memories of my grandfather. Whenever I see his name written down, it always reminds me of sitting in my grandfather's study, seeing all of his notes. As I said earlier, this recipe came from those same notes. It's an ancient dish that he was trying to restore to its original form. But, unfortunately, without the full recipe, he never quite succeeded. Still, each time he tried cooking it, he'd always get me to have a taste while it was still warm. <sighs> the memories. This really is the taste of my childhood. Ancient dish? Are cornbread buns really that old? Well, at least in my family it is. My dad learned how to make it from his dad, and supposedly it's been passed down that way for generations. We call them chili mince cornbread buns. They're a traditional folk food snack, easy to pack up and take with you on the road. So they're the perfect thing to eat on the go. La, la, la. <laughs> Seeing Globa just reminded me of something. I actually made this dish on the day I first met Globa. How did you first meet? It was in a cave in the mountains. I ducked inside to get out of the rain and saw an offering table in there, so I put the cornbread buns I brought with me on it. Then I ended up falling asleep, and when I woke up, I found out that Globa had eaten every last one! Globa followed me around ever since. We're practically family now. Hold up! Stop the conversation! Look! The... the stone! It burst open! It's... it's... Globa? What are you... what? What? Ah, I see the chili mince cornbread buns have been served. Master! Granny, look! The, the stone god statue looks just like Guava! Oh, 
Indeed it does. After all, Guoba is the deity you've been searching for. God of the stove. Guoba... Guoba is a god? <sighs> you asked me if a sufficiently festive atmosphere would be enough to reawaken the stove god. And my answer is this. Yes. And no. The Stove God has always been a deity with great affection for the people, and who acts in response to their desires. To him, the heart's passions and the heart's desires are not the same thing. Passion can be a technique, a skill, something derived from experience. But desires, they are deeper, more innate. They are the heart's strength in its purest form. Masterful chefs is wonderfully exciting, but it is more an exercise of passion than of desire, and passion alone will not suffice to reawaken the stove god from his deep slumber. But just now, when Kuching ate this dish she had longed for, a deeply held desire was fulfilled. As well as receiving an answer to her question, she also gained something much more precious. A moment of poignant nostalgia so vivid, it felt like she was right there alongside her grandfather. The enormous power unleashed by the fulfillment of this desire resonated with the stove god's statue, and caused it to manifest once more the form it took in the past. Of course, the stove god himself is not contained within the statue. <laughs> the true stove god has been here with us all along. <sighs> How does it feel, seeing a statue of yourself from your glory days? <sighs> Look at him. Still so majestic. Glory days? Wait, what happened? Did Groba used to be different from now? Oh, yes. Back in his day, your Guoba was once the patron god of the soil. But all the wisdom and power he had then, he has since surrendered to the soil itself. A god surrendering their power to the soil. I have heard this turn of phrase before, but what does it mean? The kinds of trials and tribulations that a land can face are far more than you could imagine. Droughts, floods, torrential rain, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, fires, and plagues. The threat of disaster will never fully disappear from Liyue. Even woes that have never been faced before in history will come to pass in the future. Such things affect you mortals far more than we Adepti, with our immortal forms. He once walked with you over the barren plains until you arrived at last at the harbor. He joined you in building your dwellings and lighting the stoves. It was his hand that lit the very first street lamp of Liyue and brought the aroma of cooked food into every household in the land. You mortals no longer remember him, but back in the age when you did, he was the closest of all the Adepti to the common folk. Machosius, god of the stove, born from a spark when stone struck stone. He was a god with a great love for humanity and their well-being. Millennia ago, the people sought to expand their city. They built a dwelling on the plains and called it the Gwaili Assembly. The stove god cared greatly for the people, turning himself into minions who went into every home, fostering food and solidarity alike. Alas, their home was taken by a flood. The waters ravaged the Gwaili Assembly and forced the people back south to Liyue Harbor. Though the distance was not far, the journey was plagued by a terrible storm. For a dozen days, the Adepti stayed by their side, 
During this time, the stove god cooked an ancient delicacy, flatbread with a meat sauce to stave off the cold and damp. Fit for those on the move. Centuries later, disaster and plague arose once more. The stove god would appear no longer, for he placed all of his power into the land itself to quell the calamities. His power expended, and his wits greatly reduced. Thus, his body decreased in size. By the time he parted ways with us, he wasn't even the height of a human. He told Rex Lapis and I of the dishes that bring joy and of the secrets of the flame, then went into the mountains and entered into a long slumber. The stove god departed, and Guoba was born. When he awoke, he ate the chili men's cornbread buns placed on the offering table by a young lady in yellow. Though he did not remember the past, he was profoundly moved and decided to follow this young lady thereafter. The stove god had quietly disappeared, but the vendors rose early to hawk their wares. People went out to buy goods, lit their stoves, and cooked food, just as they had done every day for as long as they could remember. In Liyue, things have always been this way. Nature provides, the mountains rejoice, we are blessed by heaven's good grace. Years have gone by. The world has transformed. But our way of life survives. Fame and fortune is only a season. It is the moment that we should embrace. Past meets present. Heritage becomes legacy. Long into the future may we thrive. You once told me that dining is the profoundest of customs in the human world. To eat well is to consume vitality itself. And to drink well is to partake of the very essence of the world. It is a matter of paramount importance, you said, for people cannot face the arduous journey ahead on an empty stomach. At once a humble affair and a profound one. A humble meal of maize and spring water is also profound in that. By ensuring one's survival, it paves the way for millennia of human history and culture to come. My dear friend, Liu has changed so much while you have slept. Looking at the prosperity and beauty around us today, does it make you happy? Woba, this is kind of a huge deal. Why didn't you say anything? Uh, he... He is not who he once was. Even the power of speech evades him now. There is no way he could have told you. Oh. Boba, but... but... Mm. Xiangling. Do not be saddened, Xiangling. There are two sides to everything. Guo Ba may have lost many of his formal faculties, but... He is now as carefree as can be, without a single worry in the whole world. In this world we inhabit, who can truly be said to live a life free of all woes? Those with a mind and with the knowledge will certainly be troubled by all manner of things. But he has gone further than us in his journey. He had both wisdom and courage. Everything he took upon himself, he was also ready to part with. His carefree demeanor today is a testament to the fact that he is at rest. So since you are his friend, take good care of him. Go out to walk and play. Allow him to eat, drink, and 
Be merry. I will! You can count on me! Xianling, you have an adeptal affinity. Guoba follows you around because he has respect for you. The moment he awoke, he was met with a familiar flavor in the chili mince cornbread buns he ate. After all that time, he still recognized the dish he had invented, and he approved of you as the one who had cooked it. That's right. The taste of one's home cuisine always brings back memories of home. Though he remembered nothing, eating the food you had cooked gave him a feeling of familiarity. That is why he stuck by you. You may be the first person in history to give the Stove God the experience of being a satisfied customer. That makes you quite a remarkable chef. If that's true, I couldn't be happier. Because putting a smile on customers' faces is what we chefs are called to do. Well then, it's getting late and I still have things to do. Time for me to say goodbye. Traveler, Paimon, Xiangling, thank you all very much. I look forward to spending more time together in the future. I guess my dad's probably heard the good news already, but I should still go catch up with him. Master, it's been a while since you came by. Why don't you join me? He thinks about you all the time, you know. He's always telling me to invite you over. Oh, goodness me. Then, far be it from me to refuse. Off we go, then. Let's saunter over gently and see how all the city folk are getting along. Hi, Dad! I'm back! Hey, hey! What are you doing there? I should be the one handling that. <laughs> Oh, it's you. Hello there, old friend. Oh, bless my soul. Are you out for a stroll as well? Given the season, it felt fitting to take a leisurely walk while the meal is being prepared. Quite right. And it also gave us the chance to run into you. Guoba may not recognize you, but as ever, he seems quite delighted to see you. So, Woba doesn't remember anything, but can still feel when something's familiar? Friendship will always withstand the ravages of time. Traveler, what do you think of the name of this festival? Moon Chase. The moon is a carrier of countless emotions. So many things only seem to surface as we gaze up beneath its poignant glow. Wherever the moonlight shines, the heart is wont to follow. Fond memories of those no longer with us. Debts of gratitude to old friends. The meaning of ages past and gone. All wrapped up in the city that has existed for so many moons to date. All these things and more. They are why people chase the moon. <laughs> in old age, the sight of many things puts one in a wistful mood. But children are always a beautiful sight to see. Such exuberant life force. It, it seems to well up from deep within the land itself. A land that has been in existence for so many millennia, and yet one that still dazzles today. Traveler, this Moon Chase Festival has been all the more entertaining with you here to witness it. Now, let's have Xiangling brew us a nice pot of tea. We shall drink and chat at our leisure. <laughs>